Welcome to the podcast, Food Talks. I'm Dallas Townsend. I will be your host. And I act as the uninformed consumer asking a nutritionist all the questions that you have. Hello, I'm Jordan Townsend. I'm our resident nutritionist here at Naturally You, and I'm here to inform the uninformed consumer, answering and helping to unpack some of your more difficult nutrition questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be discussing sugar, the scary and delicious molecule. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. Right. Okay, so I I guess we can just go back through it again and kind of do like we did with wheat and you know, just start with when did we even get sugar? I mean, back back in the day. I'm guessing they didn't have white refined sugar. So when did that kind of come onto the scene? So sugar is actually a very interesting thing because sugar does, it's one of the few things that can harm us that occurs pretty much naturally all over the place in nature. Now, it's not as prevalent as we see it in our food supply today. It's mostly in two things. It's in honey and fruit. Those are pretty much your only, as far as a quote-unquote natural source of sugar goes, that you're going to actually be able to find. And cane sugar, probably, maybe. Well, that kind of leads into what you just asked me, and that's what I was going to say. That's the refined kind. Yes. That's the thing is, once you start to change it into that form, more importantly, there's two main sources it's going to come from. Because what you're talking about is white refined sugar, or what we call table sugar. Now, we've got all types today. We've got corn syrup. We've got high fructose corn syrup. We've got all of these different types of food speci- uh, or sugar specifically that now it goes by about a thousand different names. But what you're talking about really came onto the scene more so way back in, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but it was sometime between like the 14th, 15th, 16th century. That That's when sugar, as far as we understand it, started to really show up. So in the timeline of humans, it's actually pretty new. And, th- and the biggest issue is, of course, not sugar itself. The, the problem is the delivery method. Because if you look at a fruit, do you even see sugar in that fruit? I guess not, no. Whereas you can get a cupcake, it's literally got sugar as an ingredient. It's got icing, which is just pure sugar. And then it's got the carb side of the actual bread. So that's when we start to have issues. Sugar by itself, or sugar more importantly, encapsulated in something, whether it be a fruit of any any type, comes with a lot of other stuff. Whereas when you start to separate and isolate the sugar out, turning it into white refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, et cetera, et cetera, that's when you start to have issues. But it's very similar to a lot of other things. Perfect example is the coca leaf. Now, the coca leaf is something that grows naturally. It's been used as a mild stimulant and a mild pain reliever for thousands of years. But if you soak that in gasoline and you cook it and clean it and, and do three or four chemical steps, you get cocaine. That's the same thing going on with sugar. The natural thing it derives from, sugar beets and sugar cane, which you've both mentioned already, mm-hmm. those are those are fine on their own. More importantly, if you were to even chew on something like sugar cane, most of sugar cane is actually fiber. You, you can't really digest any of yeah, it. Yeah, I had some in Jamaica. You've probably seen like the street vendors. They'll just stand out on the road and hand out yeah. bags of sugar cane. No, exactly, right. And, no, what, hand out. And what do you do, pay, Dallas? Do pay. you eat it? No. Chew on it. You, you it's chew- sort of sweet, but it's not worth it. So, no, no, no. <laughs> very, not in America. Very interesting point that you made there. It's not that it's not worth it. More than anything, it's how much work do I have to do to get this little bitty tiny hint of sweetness? Whereas, if you strip down all the fiber away from that, squeeze hundreds of tons in a press, the liquid sugar that comes out can now be turned into what we call processed or refined sugar. So that's where the issue starts to come from. It's not sugar. It's the amount of sugar, and it's sugar alone, isolated, all by itself. Because the way sugar affects the body ends up being the biggest issue here. When you're eating something packaged, perfect example, like sugar with, let's just say an apple. An apple's a super easy example. We've all had apple juice. Apple juice is super sweet, but it takes about 100 apples to make a gallon of apple juice. Whereas, how long would it take you to eat 100 apples? 
years. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever eaten a hundred. For you personally, right? Life. So even an apple a day, you're looking at over three months. Yeah. Just as an as a thing, you can drink a gallon of apple juice in about two days. So you just got all of that sugar load in forty eight hours versus four months. So that's where these issues start to come in. More importantly, an apple has a lot of other stuff in it. Sugar is just one minute component. You have fiber, you have vitamins, you have minerals, you have all of this other stuff. More importantly, that fiber. Fiber will slow down the sugar. So that's where we're getting into our biggest issues today is a lot of our stuff is just sugar without anything else. Perfect example is just Gatorade. Gatorade is just, it's basically sugar water with a little bit of salt in it. So when you have sugar by itself, you get a huge, what? Blood sugar spike. You're, as that sugar comes in, it's the simplest form of carbs. That's what we don't really ever think about. Sugar is just a carbohydrate. It's just the most basic, simple version. Technically not the most because glucose is the simplest. Your body turns fructose and sucrose and all of those other things into the smallest, easy, e most easily burnable form glucose. That's what your cells do. So if you really get down super simple to this, all it is is energy. Because again, if you look at what a carbohydrate is, it sounds a lot like a what? A hydrocarbon. So you realize gasoline and sugar are the same thing, just way bigger versions. Is sugar flammable? It is. So that's interesting. Have you ever, have you ever seen, perfect examples, alcohol? Have you ever seen anyone make bananas foster? That ethanol yeah. is yeah. a form of sugar. It's just a liquefied form of sugar. More importantly, the most common form of disaster or anything that you see on uh, any sort of like farm or processing center is what? You ever heard of these uh, silo fires? Yeah, I've seen them when they bust open like a spark or something will light it up. And What is that? So it's that simple carbohydrate. No, it's that simple carbohydrate. So uh, okay. when you get that dust, just like if you were to have fumes from gasoline, you don't need to actually set the actual wheat or the corn or whatever whatever grain you're growing rice on fire. But when those little bitty particles start to fill the air, one little one little spark, the whole thing will go up. Disclaimer, I don't think you should drink gasoline, even though it's close to <laughs> sugar. So let's break that down. So why couldn't you just have gasoline? Well, gasoline is way, way, way too complex and, and more importantly, toxic. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of chemistry your body can't do to turn gasoline into that smaller thing. Whereas with a carbohydrate, it can turn it into glucose. It's only a few steps. Whereas if you would, I always tell people, just look this up on the internet. A gasoline molecule is humongous. A carbohydrate molecule, tiny, C6H12O6. Whereas gasoline is like C24 something 48, oh, oh something, oh 30. Hmm. So that's the only difference. So that's what's kind of interesting is once you realize what your body is, it's just a, it's just an engine. It's just an organic one. That's why we have to use these different things for and our sugar food is the fuel to get you pumped sometimes. We'll go back. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. This is another interesting problem with sugar is you do not need sugar by itself. Why? Your body turns every single thing you eat, asterisk, except for fat, into sugar. So that steak that you had last night, I know it was protein, but your body turns protein into sugar. It will try to reduce everything what, down. Like glucose? Glucose. Okay. That's what I'm saying. When I say sugar, yeah. that's what I'm actually talking about. That's the one your body burns. So you see why you don't need sugar in your diet. Yeah. Because that's it's, just your body's gonna one step, it, yeah. and it's glucose. Whereas, more importantly, things like chips. Chips are extremely simple, simple carbohydrates. One or two steps, it's sugar. Okay, so what is it about sugar that is so addictive to people? So this is actually a great point because I, I try to drive this point home more than anything is sugar is a drug. And the irony of that, meaning it's not a drug in the sense that we think, okay, I put this in and I get some sort it's of... It's not schedule one. <laughs> I don't get some sort of response in the body, yeah. i.e. you take aspirin. Aspirin, the molecule blocks the nerve receptors, your headache goes away. When I say sugar is a drug, sugar is so essential to life that your body responds to, to sugar the same way it responds to drugs. Think nicotine, think caffeine, two of our most addicting substances that we have in our culture. Your body puts it on the exact same level as that. More importantly, biological needs. Your body puts sugar up there with sex because it knows if you find a high energy source, especially if you were, let's think 10,000 years ago here, 
you find a high energy source, your body is going to release as much dopamine as possible. Because it goes, I don't know what you stumbled upon, but you need to eat as much of this as you can. Everything you don't use, I'll save. I will have the ability to store that extra energy as fat. So how long is it going to take me to convince my body that, hey, sugar's not that big a deal. Don't, don't freak out. So weirdly, never. So you can, a lot of the cravings we talk about are gut, gut microbiome stuff. That's a whole other podcast for another day. But never. That's what's kind of interesting about sugar is it's so inherent. It's so in the, that's why I tell people, this is written in your DNA. I, I wish there was a way around it. And this is why the over market satur- saturation of sugar is such an issue. Because we, we have very strict laws on what? Selling cigarettes to children, yeah. marketing them to kids, selling things like alcohol to kids, selling things like any drug or any of these things to but children. But when it comes to sugar, open up, Johnny. Well, no, no. Where does it start? Because that you make an even better point. Where does it start? You're one. When you're a one-year-old, what do your parents do on your first birthday? Hey, here's a cake. Big here's some cake. ice cream. Shove your face in it. Coca-Cola and baby bottles. All kinds of just absolute insanity, which I always tell my, my parents. I say, look, I understand what you're doing. You think you're giving them something nice, but you wouldn't give your kid a cigarette. Is that why Coke tries to be such a like a friendly, family company. save the world company? Because they kind of know low-key, like, we might be hurting people. The second one is Starbucks, Dallas. That there's there yeah, theirs yeah. is just caffeine. You, they you just put sugar they, in the coffee. They, and now, and you want to talk about hard. That's why I always tell you the trickiest habit of all to break is things like soft drinks, tea, coffee, because now you're breaking a sugar addiction as long as right beside a caffeine addiction. So that makes it even harder. That's why Coca Cola. Dr. Pepper, stuff like that is even harder. Mountain Dew, that one's really tricky. You should try to working get somewhere of. with a uh, like a fountain machine. It's hard to just get water out of it and not just. Oops, you mean just, like a restaurant industry, not like an yeah, office yeah. building with and like my a last Coke job, machine. Obviously, it's just you try. Oh, you, you have try. them on tap though. That's a, oh yeah yeah. yeah. So, that's even scarier. <laughs> it it's hard. That's why a lot of people in the food in, like service industry might be a little you know. Well, a lot of them unhealthy so let's go back agitated and angry and you know a lot of it's to do with the Dressed. industry but i'm telling you you got that constant sugar dopamine hit just whenever On you tap. need it and that and see welcome that's where in 2020 we can cause ourselves harm that our biology never planned for that's that's what we don't really think about is the reason it gives you that dopamine hit is it's still in your dna ten thousand years ago it's still telling you sugar is extremely hard to find more importantly, when do you find it? You find it in honey, which is guarded by evil little creatures that will attack you if you mess with their nest. So not really a very viable option. Two is fruit. But Dallas, how how rare is fruit, truly? To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen just a wild... I mean, I've seen wild blackberry bushes. I haven't seen any wild strawberry bushes. So what's Banana your... Banana trees are down in Brazil, probably, so... Well, that's an excellent point. Very rare. If we, you're living here, I mean, we would be eating blackberries, I guess. Because that's we, the only fruit I've seen growing. The here. next question. When would we be eating blackberries? In the summer? Isn't that when they come around? For about six to eight weeks. Yeah. And then that means you now have 11 months. But now it's on tap. Of no blackberries. And again, you just mentioned a great point there. Blackberries are extremely low sugar. Any of the berries. Are they? Berries, yeah. blueberries, strawberry. I tell my clients, if it's a berry... I'm not going to really give you a lot of pushback. It's the bananas. It's the mangoes. It's the pineapples, the watermelons. So when you start an easy test. Strawberries are good? Yes. Typically an easy eye mm-hmm. test for fruit. The smaller the fruit, the lower the sugar. The bigger the fruit, the higher the sugar. Now, there's a lot of asterisks there, grapes being an example. The, other, the only tweak to that is if you make alcohol out of it, guess what it's high in? Sugar. Yeah. Because it ferments faster. Yeah. So that's why cider takes so long when you use apples. Apples are super low sugar. Whereas when you make grain alcohol, when you make whiskeys, vodkas, all of those, what do they use? They use corn. They use rice. They use wheat. Why? They're almost 100% carbohydrate yeah. starch sugar. So they ferment not just super quickly. More importantly, they get up way higher alcohol. So that's why what, that's what I tell people. That's why I like doing these podcasts. When you really sit down and look at all of this and start to understand it, it's so obvious right in front of your face. But the thing is, 
No one's ever told you this. No one's ever helped explain why this would be an issue. You just think, well, I go to the grocery store and my buggy looks about like everybody else's. <laughs> yeah. This must be normal. The thing is, it's normal for the last 70 years, not the last 7,000. And that's where we're starting to have some issues. Our bodies were never made for excess. That's why we can't lose this love handle. And that's where the other kind of Achilles heel of sugar starts to come in. Not only is it as addicting as nicotine, if you start eating sugar, anytime you get into extra calories, your body does not waste. The old adage, waste not, won't not. That is hardwired into your body. Why? Because let's just say 8,000 years ago, you killed a deer. Well, there's no refrigeration. There's no way to store that long term. Now, we eventually, humans we know, learned how to dry meat and all that. We're talking, that was only about two, Salted, three. That was only about two, three thousand years ago. That's, that's even kind of new relative. So exactly, if you kill a deer... Gather around, everyone in this tribe. We're about to eat all of this right now because if we don't, it, it spoils. Yeah. So that's when your body said, hey, I got really, really good at any time you find more than you need. I take that extra calories, and that's what insulin does. So that's what's even cooler about this is insulin is the fat storage hormone. If you find extra, I save it for later. Hmm. So hypothetically, if give a humans another thousand years on this standard American diet would the body you know cope somehow and I don't know I guess so it's interesting we've actually already seen a very very small example of this start to happen the 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 genetic the genetics that have the best adaptation for sugar are what Anglo-Saxon Caucasian think northern European mm -hmm. English German French why I couldn't tell you. I don't, it's cold, maybe? No. No. Who got white sugar first? Was it the tribes of Africa? Was it people in Asia? Was it these Pacific Island countries? No. I mean, yeah. The first countries to start importing white sugar are England, France, Germany, Spain. Okay. So that's why, strangely enough today, our lowest instances of diabetes are in Caucasians or in white, white Americans. You know where it's highest? People who don't have that genetic history, whereas at least, again, I'm mostly English. I did My mom did her 23 and me, so we know we have a lot of English in us. So that's the thing. My, my generational history, going back to the 1500s, probably the 1400s, the 800s, the, I'm talking legitimately the medieval times here, which isn't that long ago relative, but how many generations is that? usually get about three generations every hundred years so we at least have that adaptation whereas what's the big thing you see what's sort of the most common sight we see these huge Samoan people but well, what yeah. is that they didn't look like that on the island Dallas their bodies are extremely good at what fat storage because they live on an island <laughs> they have to be. and if you're not you die this is what we forget so quickly, is that the only reason our bodies act like this or have any of these habits, traits, is because it meant you lived instead of dying. So that's why we've seen it already in, in Australia, in the aboriginal population. Within, within the last 50 years, they were still hunting animals. They were still living completely, they're still uncontacted tribes. In 25 years, they already have heart disease, diabetes, and all of that. What happened? They're not adapted at all for cookies and cakes and ice cream and soda. But the problem, we started feeding it to them. So their body, their genetic has not even, their genetics have not even had time to adjust to this influx. So we will. And that's why we've seen with them in America is a perfect example. The highest instances of heart disease, diabetes, all that is minorities. Well, why would that be? Well, where are you from? What have your people been eating for the longer time? Not that Ameri not that. I'm perfectly immune. My body is just that little bit more adapted. Well, that and minorities usually don't have a lot of money to. They tend to eat buy the better more food. unhealthy so they're food. They're eating the worse of the worse, and they're not acclimated to, to it or whatever. Exactly. So. But again, my thing is, it goes back to how how long ago have your people started doing this? Whereas you go into some more, for example, Africa. There's very very uh, high tech places in Africa, like South Africa, for example. There's places still living in villages with huts. So if you're, a, if you're of Ghana, Ghanaian descent versus South African descent, 
you're going to be way more sensitive to sugar than the guy who's been living in South Africa or more importantly whose family has been living in that more modern situation. This is where this whole timeline thing gets kind of screwy is all of this happened about 100 years ago. Dallas, what is 100 years in the real time I mean, of people? genetically, nothing. Nothing. Like, that's about, three, about three generations. Yeah. But, I mean, so I recently went to Jamaica, and you'll see all these fast food places they have over there. They probably can't be good to introduce them to, like, a standard American diet type fast food. Like, it'll probably fatten them up, but... That just it can't be good for. Them. Well, and there's are, there's several articles on this. You can even just look these up if you want to read a little bit more about it. But it's called the exportation of bad health. America is exporting its diseases to China because <laughs> that's the thing. China now has about the same amount of Kentucky Fried Chickens, about the same amount of McDonald's, and about the same amount of Starbucks that we have. Well, how did that happen? We just slowly snuck in there. But guess what's going up all of a sudden? Heart disease. Diabetes, obesity. Same thing with Europe. Now it's creeping into where? South America. Now it's creeping into Africa. All these countries. Now the thing is, again, they have way less time being exposed to these foods. I'm not special, but at least my genetics are used to a higher sugar diet. Not a high, a higher sugar diet. So that's where it gets even trickier. And that's why you see specific, I reference Samoan, but any of the Pacific Island people, extremely sensitive to sugar. More importantly, native populations like Inuit, Eskimo, the Aboriginal Af- uh, Australians, those are the ones that within, within five to ten years, half the population's obese. Well, what happened? Well, we... They've never, the perfect example is the Inuit. They've been living off of whale blubber and meat for about nine to ten months a year. So all of a sudden they're eating McDonald's and they're eating Frosties and they're drinking Gatorade. Their body is not ready for that. So it goes, hey, you found extra. I I know that we spend about three months of the year not eating. So I'm going to make sure I store that away as fat. So that's where it's kind of crazy once you start to see and understand sugar itself is not the problem. It it goes back to how much sugar is everywhere all the time now. And like I said, there's no laws against marketing sugar to kids. There's no – I always joke with my parents. You lock your liquor cabinet. Your pantry's wide open. (laughs) That's the one that's more addicting. That's why kids – if you ever notice, what's a kid's favorite holiday? Halloween. Why? I get candy. I was about to say, every holiday is their favorite holiday. Valentine's Day. Candy candy day. Uh, Well, it ends up being, you have to understand, sugar is your first drug. It's your first, we call it sugar high. What what are we doing here? We we it's are very so hypocritical, well. yeah. And the way we treat other drugs and then sugar and just like ah oh, that one that one doesn't count. It makes you feel really good. Yeah, no, it does. So do other drugs. So what does nicotine. So does caffeine. But they're bad for you, and it's proven. We've seen the proof. But yet they're not bad for you. But excess of anything, oh, especially yeah. over time, gonna cause all kinds of types of issues. So why do we have that double standard? Is it the lobbyist that told us sugar wasn't that bad at first? Well, now you're asking the really <laughs> really, really tough questions. And what it kind of goes back to is the same reason why, why, why are cigarettes illegal? Or why are cigarettes illegal? Well, we've, well, we've always smoked, Jordan. Okay, that doesn't mean it's good. Well, they got a bunch of people addicted in the 50s, and they're like, eh. The 50s? Earlier, probably. Let's go back to, like, the, the 1600s. Well, the heyday people, was the 50s, probably. Well, the main reason the England was interested in the colonies, they could grow tobacco. That was really it. Virgi- Ooh, Virgi- Virginia was perfect for it. So that's what I'm trying to say is, again, sugar goes back to, again, the nine, the eight, nine hundreds of medieval time when they go, well, would, Dallas, we've always eaten sugar. Well, we can't stop that. Whereas, again, it, a lot of it's alcohol. Why is alcohol legal? Oh, well, it was in the Bible. It was, it was a long time ago. Something about the longer we've been around something, we normalize it. Whether it's good for us, whether it kills us, whether it hurts us. It's crazy. And again, that's why I say we're so protective and we're so over the top nowadays, whereas all these things we're doing are harmful to us. We just are used to them. We accept them. That is, yeah, that's very true because, I mean, you think about it. Not that – how do you even make a law around – food and sugar and be like look guys you can't put that much sugar in something didn't the surge drinks meant didn't that used to have a bunch and then they brought them back or something surges and they just changed the name to something else i mean 
too much, like you said, excess is proven to hurt people. But how do you stop these companies from just making these horrible foods to uninformed people that they'll eat them? You see what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people would say, your government. But we know that's not going to happen. Because, again, how much am I getting paid by, again, Diamond? Like, that's what people don't think yeah. about. How much money do you think Diamond makes every quarter? I mean, it's you have to look it up. Staggering. It's staggering. Yeah. I mean, when you're bringing in, I'm not talking about train carts. I'm talking about tanker ships full of sugar. That's what, that's what people don't understand. That's why the best investment in the last 20 years was Starbucks. Why? They sell an addictive product to everyone. There's no age restriction. That That's a gold mine. Nic- nicotine and cigarettes were that. You mentioned it in the 50s. Oh, you mean we can sell this to anybody and they will get hooked and have to keep coming back? And then welcome to all these cereal companies. The biggest pushers are General Mills, <laughs> Post, Kellogg's, all these friendly little happy. What do they have, Dallas? Animated characters. <laughs> Lucky Charms, Tricks Rabbit, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. My God. But all that is is essentially to your brain the same as cocaine. Well, the problem is there's no incentive to helping people. It's not going to get your profits up, more yeah. than likely. The only goal is sell more. So that's why there's no – That's and who pushes back? Because, again, if you look – the best thing I always like to show people, look on the back of your nutrition label. You see calories. You see vitamin A. And it has all these percentages, fat, protein, all that. You know what doesn't have a daily value? Sugar. It, it'll be completely blank next to it. Now, the World Health Organization, which is outside of the United States, has actually said that the average person – this is adults – should only have 25 to 30 grams of added sugar. A day? A day. So y'all want to break that down real quick? That's like? <laughs> one Coca-Cola 12 ounce. Yeah, I was going to say, it was like one Mountain Dew. One. No, Mountain's actually, Mountain Dew's actually over. You're going to be about 125, 130% of your daily value if you get one Mountain Dew. Yikes. So welcome. This is what people don't understand. The amount we should be in taking versus what we're now getting our hands on. And this all goes back to your, your biology. The problem is with all this type 2 diabetes, uh, obesity, all of this stuff is these are not mysteries. It's <laughs> literally the thing we're putting in our mouths every day. But we act like it's a mystery. Well, again, because, well, Jordan Dallas, I like that food. I just, I just can't figure it out, man. Drinks of Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking they're helping themselves. Yeah, like, oh, this will wean me off that bad sugar. It says zero sugar in it. Got malodextrose and aspartame. and That's actually a whole other topic, too, for another day. But just real quick is when you taste sweet, whether it be monk fruit or stevia, I know those are the trinity ones, whether it be aspartame or sucralose, when your brain tastes sweet, you know what it makes? Before it even comes into your digestive system, insulin already gets released. So they've done studies. People who drink diet sodas don't lose weight. Why? They end up making up for those missed calories with other food. Because your body says, look, dummy, if I spent time and energy creating a hormone in your body and producing insulin, you better go eat something so that I have something to use insulin So it on. makes you hungry. Yes. So he, that's the thing. If you have an insulin surge and there's nothing for it, because remember, insulin only acts on glucose. So insulin does not work on sucralose. It doesn't work on aspartame. It doesn't do any of that stuff. So as soon as you taste that and you don't eat anything with actual calories, you are now going to be compelled to keep eating. So where do we go from here as far as sugar? As far other than just, you know, reducing the amount for yourself, but we have a nation hopelessly addicted. The biggest problem is people don't even think like that. What's the You just said hopelessly addicted. People go, I'm not addicted to sugar. Stop eating sugar. It's so hard. They're gonna I can quit almost anything but not sugar, I'm telling you. I still gotta eat some ketchup. How long have you been using? My entire life. And that's everybody. So that's why it gets harder after, again, we're in our 20s. But imagine being 45, 50, 65. The thing is, and if you're listening to this and you really want to try it, stevia and the monk fruit, it's a better alternative. It's a way better. And it really does not take that long to make the transition. It will taste weird at first, and there's an aftertaste. But I'm telling you, I've had green tea sweetened with the stevia, the little sweet drops, you can't tell. You're used to it. You like it. More importantly, it's okay. You don't have to. I just, I just really like sugar. It's the only one for me. That other one tastes a little weird. Your body will change. That's the other thing to tell people is the first step is reducing. 
is just start cutting it out where you can. Perfect example is I do not order sweet tea anymore. If I'm going to get tea at a restaurant, half and half. That's not some magic bullet. But guess who cannot drink sweet tea anymore? It's just about reduction, like I, you said. That's what I was about to say. 25 Sw- grams was the world health. You know, yes. That's, you can have some, but if you're doing 100 grams four times the dose or whatever. So this is ultimately how much. this is ultimately how we know that sugar is a drug. It's because the more sugar you use, the more sugar you need to get the same effect. So again, that's why over time people can eat tons of sugar. Whereas let's say they did a 30-day detox and they let their body reset and they went to perfect example. Our father's actually done this. He got where he would drink a tiny little eight ounce Coke every t- every day, every day, every day, every day. Well, he went off sugar for like three months or something. Came back on his birthday, took one sip of Coca-Cola, spit it out, threw the whole can away. He said, that is entirely what, Dallas? Too sweet. Too sweet, yeah. This is a 55-year-old man who'd been drinking sugar, eating sugar his whole life. When's the last time you ate a bag of Skittles? I mean, Skittles, I can't even imagine. <laughs> Yuck. I, 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 I don't even remember what they're it was. They're too much. But I was starting to like reduce sugar a little bit, and then... Someone offered me some, and I was like, that is terrible. And, and that it, is just I, toxic. I really hate it's saying nasty. this, but it's very similar to heroin, meaning when you're regularly using opiates, you can continually use more and more. When you're regularly smoking cigarettes, always this is the easiest way Build to think about it. What, does anyone start off smoking two packs a day? I would hope not. <laughs> yeah, you start with 40 cigarettes. No. no. Months, years, you can get up to that tolerance. Over time, same thing with sugar. The more and more and more you eat, you now need to get 100 grams minimum to get that dopamine hit. You now got to get 200 grams minimum to get that dopamine hit. So that's why I tell people sugar is a drug. Not only is it addictive, it physically starts to take more of the same amount over time to get any sort of effect from it. What's the list of the symptoms that come with sugar? I know like weight gain. Do you get like brain fog? What what do people tell you? Well, the problem with sugar is it's we actually have that we have a sheet here at Naturally it's got over it's got the hundred and sixty seven ways sugar is affecting your health. And it's a, it's literally terrifying how many things. <laughs> Brain fog's one just because when you eat sugar, your pancreas, your liver, your small intestines, your stomach, all of these organs go to work because it just thinks you hit the jackpot. This person found the highest form of energy. We are living in starvation mode. Stop everything. That's why that 2 o'clock feeling that we talk about a lot. Well, what did you have for lunch? Pizza and a Coke? Yeah, your body wants you to sit down. I don't need you thinking. I don't need you moving. Let me get to work on this so that I can either process and, more importantly, store everything you didn't need. That's what's so crazy is our bodies are still living on the plains of Africa. That's what's so crazy about this. We're the ones who have jobs, we have cars, we eat three, four, five, six times a day, we drink alcohol. That's where this starts to get so crazy. Our bodies were never made for this. More importantly, our, gen- our genes. Our genes don't know what's going on, but we keep putting the thing in that it says, hey, good job. Hey, good job. Hey, good job. And that's why over time, like you said, you're eating Skittles and you're drinking orange juice and you're eating a muffin and, 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 and. Whereas if you start to cut that stuff out... Even orange juice. I had, a, I had some, some fresh-squeezed orange juice the other day. I took one sip. I was like, whoa, that's sweet. That is, oh, my God. I took That was all I needed. I didn't even want any more. That's not because I have some great willpower. That's just my, my tolerance is crushed. I do not, I cannot handle that much sugar anymore. Now, this is kind of a stretch, but with the, you mentioned the genes, CRISPR, they can... They have new technology to kind of like work on and edit genes, and they're doing a bunch of tests. But what I mean, what if there was a way they could go in and change that? You know what I mean, and kind of make it to where. Or what if there's a way they could lower your tolerance? I don't know if that'd be genetically, but they could alter the genes in your mouth. That's what it would really be more than anything. It's just a taste, man. You just you so that's it. and this is where this gets weird. It, the reason CRISPR could really save us would be something like that, because again. If you don't like the way something tastes, what issue are you going to have eating it? You're not going to eat it. So this is what we don't think about. The problem with sugar is, why, we talked about this just a second, why do you like it, Dallas? You are a vehicle. You are a machine. And you need what? Fuel. So that's where this really gets tricky at the end of the day. You're talking about changing your genes. That's like telling the car not to look for gas anymore. 
well, it goes, I need gas to go. So I'm always no, going to want more gas. So that's where it gets interesting. You would have to almost more work on the on this the flavor profile side of it. Whereas, hey, we can give you this. You now don't perceive sugar as pleasurable. But at the end of the day, your body still needs energy. Something like that seems possible. One day. There's no money in it, Dallas. Do, do go, yeah. Please, just these are public companies. Go look up what General Mills made last quarter selling you sugar. We're fighting a losing battle here. Because Just it, trying to inform people. That's why we educate. Because the only thing that makes change is your money. So stop buying Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Buy the more organic, lower sugar version. Guess what? It's not going to give you a huge dopamine hit. But why do we eat to begin with? Remember, the only reason we have it's sadness, a lot of people, is the, is the real answer to that. A it lot feels of people good. just eat because it just feels good and things aren't going right in their life. And I always joke, is it's the one thing we don't consider a vice. Even though it is a deadly sin, right? Yeah. Gluttony. But we don't consider... Because, again... That I've honey been, bun's always there for you. I've been to more <laughs> churches where the guy goes, Oh, you know, I don't drink. I don't cuss. I don't chase women. He gets his third piece of cobbler off of the buffet. I go, that's interesting. You don't have any vices, huh? Mm-hmm. So that's just... Again, you just said it. it. We don't consider it even like... We know, oh, okay, well, I need to reduce my sugar. I need to watch my calories. We don't realize that we're putting a needle in our arm, that we're smoking a cigarette and destroying this body because sugar is not a poison. This is a very interesting thing to make. It is not an acute poison, meaning there's no real amount of sugar you can ingest that will kill you outright. It's chronic poison, meaning over time it physically corrodes, breaks down your liver, overstimulates your pancreas. That's why you mentioned we have type 2 diabetes, which used to be called adult onset diabetes, meaning you could only get it in your later years in life. Now we have 14-year-olds with adult onset diabetes, meaning how much sugar are you eating? Your pancreas can no longer keep up. And if you want to take, you know, I, I feel a little compassion for these people because a lot of them don't know. They, they haven't been told that this is bad for them. And then that 14-year-old with diabetes, he's... I don't know. He's Was he ever gonna, given a chance, right? Yeah. Like you said, at one years old, mom but, and dad are doing him a favor. They're, I want him to feel special. I want him to have cookies and ice cream and cake. But beyond the compassion for that person with type 2 diabetes, our country, our health care, it's blowing it up to where we're having to take care of all these sick people just so General Mills can make a buck. Welcome to why our health care is so expensive. So, our health care shouldn't be expensive. <laughs> the problem is we're trying to treat chronic disease with drugs. It doesn't work. I always remind people, if you have a, if you cut yourself and are bleeding out and you need something to stop the bleeding, that's when drugs are great. No herb, no, no food is going to do that. But if we suggest that maybe the foods is an issue, then guys, what are y'all talking about? The no. Other, the other problem is the way we talked about this with gluten. How do you keep a society happy? Cheap food. That's good, simple. Good tasting cheap food. High reward cheap food. Not good tasting because that's the thing. Our food actually doesn't taste very good. That's why we have you ever to. You've a donut stick. That's why we have to <laughs> over season it. So that's what's interesting. It sure somehow wiggled its way into the same category as salt and paprika and rosemary. It is treated like a spice, but last I checked, it is, has the same addictive properties that every drug that the FDA has to approve, that you have to get a prescription for. But is sugar FDA approved? It's everybody <laughs> approved, right? There's no limit. There's no rule. There's no there, like you just said too. What's the upper limit? There's not. There's no upper limit on how much sugar. The a upper limit can is if you put too much. Some people, I guess, unless you're just hopelessly addicted, would be like gross. That's too much because you know to, there is a tolerance level. Ours is rather low. Some are high, but there's a point to where people don't just drink liquid sugar for the most part. So you some brought- do very few. Well, you brought up a great point, and this might even be a great one to kind of wrap up the whole sugar discussion on, is there's a Harvard study. I encourage everyone to look this up. It's called the Bliss Point. So you just said it without even realizing you said it. What they did in this study is they used coffee, and everyone here who's, who's listening is familiar. When you have coffee, you add a little sugar, take a sip, eh, add a little sugar, take a sip, better, 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 better. There's a point when you add that extra touch of sugar and you take a sip, what do you just say? Ugh, that's too sweet. So right before too sweet and right before not sweet enough is called the bliss point. 
So there's actually, I, when I was at Mississippi State, we I didn't realize I was partaking in these studies. What it is is they'll go and they'll pay us college kids 20 bucks. They'd give us a bunch of Reese's. They'd give us all kinds of just like, hey, come do a quick t- a five-minute taste test. We'll give you $10. So I actually did one. It was three, or no, no, it was five blue liquids. And it said rate them on a scale of one to five. Best, worst, whatever. So I didn't realize everyone I tasted has a different amount of sugar in it. So what they're looking for is the statistical amongst a population bliss point. What do most people consider the best version of this food? This is food science. This is how crazy this is getting. It's not just sugar anymore. There's entire laboratory teams figuring out how to make this food so that you cannot stop eating it. So that's what they're doing now. It, and what I, like I was saying, they find that statistical average where most people say, whoa, that's perfect. So now all of a sudden we're trapped. And because if you look around nature, do grapes have a bliss point? No. Mm-mm. Watermelon even, mango, banana. No. None of them have that thing because the bliss point does not occur You're naturally. You're in a all peach. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, that's. I think that's a great place to wrap this one up. Uh, everybody, thank you all for listening and, you know, tune in next time and we'll be here with some more interesting food facts. My only two cents, do less. Don't go off sugar. Reduce. Reduce.